doing this session, master mediators at work. The only thing is that before we get into, you'll have to tell us about yourself, but before that, the concept has been, let's just understand what people understand about the conference. So I'm putting you on the spot, which I love to do to people. <laughs> what, what, I mean, how, what have you heard about the conference or know about the conference, whatever it is, I mean, that, that. Well, uh, Vikram, I've heard that you brought together some amazing people, amazing thoughts uh, on mediation. And my hope is that you will put all this together and that will be such an amazing contribution to the mediation movement. Perfect. So basically, it started on 18th May and Thursday is the last day. So those learnings and key takeaways, we have a session. You must attend that. The, of course, Ken Cloak is my idol in relation to the mediators and the face for mediators. He's kicked it off on his birthday and it was so nice of him to sp spend his spend his some time on his birthday with us. So that's how it is. And when you said that the, in terms of content, now look, they're almost, I think, maybe 330, 40 videos on the channel. So I tell people that just go to YouTube, search Mediator Vikram and put, put whatever topic you want chances are you'll find something there. So there's been, and the wealth of experience and knowledge that people have brought in. That's what people tell me that look five years from now, you look back and you say you created something where people can, for, a free resource for people from all over the world and people have benefited. That's what I hear from them with the messages that I get. So I think, yes, it's been really nice of everyone like you to come in and at least share those experiences. So Leila, you're going to share your experiences on master mediators at work. So please, but you'll have to tell us about yourself because that's important to connect and a master mediator herself to talk about herself. So please. So um, Vikram, instead of the drilling that went on, now they start pounding. So will you give me a moment to set no that problem. Right? No problem. I'll put the sheet up for the, the schedule up. I'll go slowly through the schedule. So... <laughs> There'll be enough time. There's a long schedule, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, there's a Lela has some construction happening near her place, so that's the noise is disturbing her. So basically, you can, I mean, you can put this schedule is on social media. The links are there. So just the fact that we started on 18th May with Ken Sloak's birthday and the inaugural address. So these have been the topics. People have given me the topics and we've and every all the panelists are invited for all sessions. So that's how it is. So please have a look at it. There's a social media post, panelists, all there brought by. And so Della, that was, yep, yeah, please. Yes, Vikram, uh, to, to uh, speak a little about myself, a lawyer for the past almost 30 years, came into mediation quite accidentally in 2007 when I was invited by the Chief Justice to set up the Bangalore Mediation Center. And uh, to be honest, I didn't know the difference between mediation and meditation at that point. Um, but have the Chief Justice having called me, I said yes. But when I uh, went into that training, when I uh, started gaining more understanding of the process, I realized that the universe had conspired to pull me into this space. And there has been no looking back. 2015, I completely stopped litigation. I uh, moved into mediation, started a private mediation practice because I felt that mediation has to move uh, into the totally non-adversarial space. Whatever said and done quotes are the adversarial space. Parties should have this um, opportunities to resolve their disputes even before they go to court or in an, in an environment which is totally non-adversarial. So that's where I've been during the past, um, from 2015, and actually today I'm going to speak about an amazing experience in 2011 when I was invited to be a Weinstein Fellow with the Jams Foundation. So 
That's what I'd like to share today with you okay. and the rest of the uh, mediator community. If I just put down the fact that I started a series called Mediator Experiences, the idea was, of course, to have mediators talk about their memorable experiences in the mediation world. I mean, they were not necessarily in a mediation. And then I had a look at this. The someone there was actually Migle, who's the who was the last year's fellow, and she was on my show in conversation with the beautiful mind, and she spoke about the fellowship. At that time, I didn't know about it. So then I said, let's check. So the, there's a whole list on the uh, the Jam Foundation website. And I said, I know so many of these people. Let's call them and let's talk to them about their experience with the fellowship. So then I said, let's keep that series only for Jam's fellows. And I, of course, wrote to you and you're a busy person. So I still haven't got chance to do that session with you, which is going to happen whenever you give me time. So that's also on YouTube. There are, I think, about, I think, 23 or 24 of the fellows have been covered up till now. So... The, the, just to put it out there, people can search mediator experiences and they can find that series in their playlist also. So, thank you very much. So, please. So, uh, in 2011, I was in the mediation world young because I was just uh, since 2007 and this was 11. So, um, this found the, uh, the, uh, the opportunity to observe mediators, to observe, which means I didn't get involved in the mediation at all. I observed about six or seven master mediators at work. And this was a great learning experience. So I'm going to narrate some of these. The names are changed. I'm going to have fun with the names. So uh, I, I, I believe that somebody who knows these people will guess who they are, but not otherwise. So don't have the, too much. Yeah, don't have too much fun with the names also. <laughs> <laughs> so the first person is going to be uh, a guru, the master mediator. And uh, he was, in fact, in a publication while I was there, he was reported as the uh, um, mediator of mediators or living legend of a mediator. So here I am observing him and um, he comes in well prepared for the mediation and he tells me that he reads the papers, the mediation briefs that come to him in a way that's different to the uh, way he reads his books for an exam or uh, you know some other situation where he's reading but here in mediation it is focused attention when he reads the papers and as he described it it reminded me of the way I read my mother's letters when I first went to a boarding school so when, when she wrote that the mango tree is in bloom, I can see the flowers, the white flowers. I can smell the blossom. I can see the bees. Okay. Or when she wrote that uh, the neighboring uncle died, I could hear the wail. So that's how this mediator read the papers. And then, of course, the way he listened, straight back, Zen-like attention, almost peering in, into their souls, into their experience. So the way that he did that, this was an IP infringement dispute between some um, tech giants. Um, so he, he really listened to them. And after that, as the mediation progressed, he may have got more evaluated, but that happened only when he developed the trust of the parties. When the parties felt comfortable, there was a kind of an avancular relationship. And at one point I heard him say, son, I don't think this is the best for you. So something like that, those were the lines. And yet, he did evaluate a little bit. I was struck 
by the respect that he showed to the parties. Saying things like, now has come the time for me to serve you best. Or the humility. Each time he made a, a, you know, a, a small mistake on the fact or the numbers or said something which was not entirely conducive to the mediation process, I saw him slightly whack his left hand with his right hand and then apologize. <laughs> it was, it, there was so much humility or raise his hand and say, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. So, so I was really struck by that humility. He, he spoke to me about the physics of mediation and he related to, um, to Aikido. He was a master in Aikido. Aikido, I think I pronounced it right, I hope. You have to tell us about that. You love to tell us about that. What Aikido, you have to tell us. Yeah, he related the two concepts. And uh, yeah. he said, when in combat, the master does not resist. He allows the opposing energy to flow until that opposing energy is spent. After that, the opponent is open to following the master. And that's how the master leads the opponent to a resolution, by allowing the opposing energy to be spent. So that was very beautiful. And uh, he did tell me that before each mediation, he opens himself to grace. And every resolution he felt was one drop of negative energy less in the world. Wow. That's, that's deep. That's deep. I think all the things that you've said are amazing. First, that immersed aspect of it, to be in that situation, to feel it, I mean, to feel every aspect of it. But the soul, look, I, I tell you, all these points that you have said, you, you should have been in that symposium, heart, soul, spirituality and mediation that I had in April. All these things is something that I keep discussing that are very important aspects of it. I mean, I, just the fact that the energy and in this symposium also, you're we talking about life, energy and mediation. And I think that's a very important aspect and we must have more discussions on this. So, Lela, you'll have to take us through these at and in earlier, later sessions or whatever topics we'll have. So, this is, I think, very important. Absolutely. Okay, my next, the next person, my next observation. The name I have for him, when I think of him, that's what came to me. Big Boss Rajnikanth. <laughs> but look, you have to tell people about Rajnikanth also. <laughs> <laughs> Rajnikanth is a famous hero in the film world in India. <laughs> Well, uh, his hallmark, just as the, uh, uh, the, uh, the guru, the mediator, his hallmark was focus attention. The hallmark of Big Boss Rajnikanth was style, charisma, strategy. So when I meet him in the hallway, um, he looks a comfortable person, um, you know, full of humor. We walk down the corridor, he's about five feet, six inches tall, nothing exceptional. He enters the mediation room and the superhero emerges. He's kind of connected to all the maybe 25, 30, people in the room. He, uh, this was a bankruptcy dispute described as the biggest uh, in the history of America. It was 10 years in their court. And there he is connected to all of them in no time. He is, you know, um, that, that, there's that energy about like a like a conductor in an orchestra, he's 
really got it. And his goal from the beginning is to streamline the process. Bring parties to a constructive conversation, constructive responses. Focus on resolution. How to build a unique process for this dispute. Customized, designed. It's not just a bullying process. It's finding a different pathway to resolution. He makes it clear your earlier responses have not worked. And now I'm going to take you into another pathway. So he, he is uh, clear. He needs to bring out what are the strat strategies for negotiation? What are those elements that you would need in the negotiation? What are the obstacles? He says, here, I, I notice a hump here. How do we get you over the hump? Um, and he can get firm when, uh, when somebody said something, he said, you know, I didn't get you here. You brought me here. Or when, when well, one of the lawyers tried to control the process a little bit, he said, look here, sir. If you're going to tell me what I should be doing, what is working, what is not working, I'm not going to let you let that happen. I'm not going to be a ping pong in this in, in this uh, conversation. So he, he was very clear about what he would do, how he held the process, and at the same time, very authentic and humble. I remember he once said, I've done many insurance cases, but I have so much to learn from you on the nuances of this case. You know, with all that energy, the humility that is brought in. And he made the parties and the lawyers feel very confident that he was well prepared, he knew all the facts and he would show it to, he would say things like, in your letter dated 18th October, you stated X. So the parties immediately felt, here is somebody who's really understood our case and the lawyers who come loaded to tell it all, realize that this person knows what he's doing. So he, he builds that confidence. And what was most important to him is the story in the dispute. He says, every dispute, there will be facts, there will be law, there could be technology, but most important is the story. And the story must be told. We need to hear the story. I thought that was very beautiful. And the quote that he used, and which I really keep using, out of the mud comes the lotus. But I mean, let me tell you that these all everything that you said, the superhero Rajni Khan, and the memes of him, I think people should watch that. Rajni Khan can do anything, that kind of thing. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, the way he came into that room and the new avatar appeared, I, I was startled because as I walked down the room, I thought, here's a very ordinary human being. But in the mediation room, he brought in his energy. And he led the parties to a resolution. I think this is an interesting thing. That whole concept of becoming another person there and being able to... All those things that you said. Again, I mean, these are very important things. I think this has to be circulated to all the young people or everyone. I'm not even young. I think everyone. I think all these things are so important. Each of them. I mean, I put down notes while you were talking. And each of those things are so important. So important. And they work really well. I think that's really... I think it's really helpful, Lela. I think... 
we need to do a whole series like think again <laughs> a whole series on master mediators at work <laughs> so if nice ajam so um you've time for one more more than enough time we have look we have half an hour we have half an hour we'll be discussing these now these are the points that we are putting out and then the common thread between the humi- humility is already a common thread for sure which has come in and of course lots of others but yes well the next is devi the purest the feminine she so powerfully brought in the feminine you could see that she focused on getting everybody comfortable building trust securing credibility she used the active listening techniques brilliantly summarizing reframing restating reflecting she kept the conversations she held it in a manner that there was comfort in the room and i remember you know at one point as the conversations were going on one side was beginning to look uncomfortable and restless she called the, that side out those set of people she called them out and she said i know this conversation is difficult for you the way they communicate is not most pleasant but don't fall for the play uh, for the bait don't fall for the bait indulge me stay with it i love that she she immediately noticed it addressed it and the conversation continued she guided the conversation at one point she told one of the people on one side address the conversation to mr x he is the decision maker y is getting the most attention but x is the decision maker the okay, how she was able to guide the conversation a perfect facilitator early on in the mediation i asked her they the purest do you can you predict the number and she said yes i can predict and she gave me a number but she didn't go back and talk about the number or push the number she allowed the parties to come there when one side a big corporation tough nosed negotiation the others the other side uh, was a group of uh, employees and the big corporation was getting tough nosed in their negotiation she realized that there should be humanity in the room so she went to the group of employers i'm sorry employees and they are the ones who had the human stories the stories of disappointment how they they were involved in some of the biggest most successful projects of the company and they were not acknowledged so they had the the stories she went to them and she picked one of them to be the ally because he could communicate in a manner that there wasn't too much emotion she coached him and took him to the other side and i could see the dramatic effect humanizing the dispute as the day progressed everybody was tired it was 9 pm we already had about 12 hours of mediation i remember she went in 
freshened up, came out as if the day was beginning. Everybody could draw energy from her. At the end of the day, there were two numbers. The difference was very narrow. I was tempted to say, come on, split the difference. But she didn't. All that she said was, you have two numbers. Don't lose it. Go home. Rest. Get back to me in a few days. She said two days or something. Then she called me up and she said, the case settled. And the number was the same. Wow. What she had predicted. <laughs> 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 that, that was just amazing. The experience and the ability to allow the parties to come to it. And I remember one of the things she told me, which stays in my mind. She said, conflict, <coughs> conflict is like a ball of fire. You hold it, the mediator, you hold it, you contain it and never let it go out of hand. Uh, and I, I really like the humanizing aspect of this because that aspect, I think, is something which is really important. Again, needs to be discussed. But again, I mean, I think that energy part that you brought in, I think that is energy is really important to discuss because, look, it's an experience because you were there, you experienced it. You know all what it's all about. If otherwise, if you talk about it, people say, what is this abstract concept that you're talking about? It doesn't happen. And that too, sometimes in commercial matters, people have this thing, no, here, it's a different thing. But it has to be explained that this is part and parcel of what a mediator brings in and yeah, of the process also. Okay, I'll give you one more. <laughs> Lots more. Lele, this look is so interesting. I mean, I would have actually kept a longer thing. It's just that because of those sessions have to be a certain time. That's it. But we'll go, we are going to talk about this. And I tell you, let's bring other people into this. We'll have sessions on this. I think this is a very good series. You started a series for me. Let me tell you. <laughs> you know, this is something that I wanted to share from the time I came back in 2011. And thank you, Vikram, for giving me this opportunity to reflect on it, to go back to it. So this, I call him the master of multitudes. Multi-party dispute, a case between builders, suppliers, homeowners, insurers. There were 100 parties. Wow. 100 parties. His hallmark, managed information. So I see him in the morning, it was about 8.30 a.m. He's making calls, teleconferences, uh, emails. Uh, you know, I can see that he's working with information. And he has designed a matrix unique to this case. A matrix which can meticulously, meticulously contain all this information in this multi-party case. For him, he says, information is the most crucial. He gathers the information and he, then he breaks it into its elements. Every dispute, he says, has elements which you need to identify. And that is the building block. So he, his ability to get the information, to break it to its elements, see the building blocks. He's designed the matrix, which makes it all clear to him. And then when I looked at him working with that matrix, I was reminded of a young boy with a Rubik cube. You know how he's trying to fit it, he's, he's, he's kind of playing with it, and then he gets it. I saw the same excitement. He settled 84 out of the 100. 
Wow. That's why I called him master of the multitude. So each one had a different style, Vikram. There was one who came in whistling into the mediation room. Humor. But others couldn't carry it. He could carry it. Humor was what he could carry. So, you know, as I reflected, or as I reflect on these different styles, the different masters, what they all see is that when there is conflict, there's turbulence, there's confusion, there's pain. And that binds these otherwise smart, effective people. It binds them down. So what the mediator does is to bring in their own energies using their own styles to help them release themselves from that bite. It, it reminds me of the rivers that come from the mountain. They all flow separately, but eventually they all flow into the great ocean. And that great ocean is understanding. Understanding perspectives. Respecting the people who are in that situation. Humility. Authenticity. This is what they use to lend themselves, to lend their energies to the parties in conflict and take them to the door for resolution, for self-determination. And this is what distinguishes a master mediator from not the master. Wow, Lela. Lela, I think I'll have to have another symposium on heart, soul, and spirituality because all these things we were discussing, you've put it down so well. I think this authentic self aspect of it, we were discussing that and what is the authentic self. I mean, we were having that discussion. So maybe you can add to that. Maybe you can add to that. You can tell us what you think is the authentic self. Maybe looking at, of course, the masters in otherwise, how, what would you think is the authentic self? The authentic self for me is to be myself. I don't have to be A, B, C, or D. When I connect with my own energies and when I feel comfortable with, with that, feel comfortable with what is within me and what is outside me, without judging, without evaluating, just being present. To me, that is authentic. Yeah, because we just, I mean, you put it so simply and just the fact of being present by itself, I think takes up people a lot. Maybe is it time or is it just like Ken says that he meditates every morning, that's helped him a lot. Whatever way people do it, I think that part of it to be into that connecting with yourself, with your energies, like you said, I think it's really, really, really important. I think, I, I, I mean, this is, like I said, these are things which people who, I, I of course say, these are people with the mediator mindset. And I think they connect with it. And I think this has to be brought out that like I keep saying these are special people. You have, you're special because you can do all that. So I think that's why this has to be brought out, really. I think you really put down very important things, Lela. Without maybe, I don't know whether you realize it or not. I don't know whether you do, because you just said exactly what you are, or how you go about it. But that simplicity and that simple, those simple things sometimes are the most difficult for people to actually pick up and adopt their lives. I think, yeah. Thank you, Vikram. Thank you for the opportunity of being able to articulate, to be able to share, uh, and for your acknowledgement. Thank you.
but it's not going to end so well right? so we have time you are going to <laughs> going to tell us there are definitely more examples more aspects more common threads there is so much that you have to put out your like i said your experience and your wealth of knowledge people need to hear from that those simple words those simple aspects sometimes people are looking for some complex thing lela is going to give us some rocket science technology or something like that it is sometimes the simplest things are the ones that are important yes i i agree i agree that uh, i often say you know it's like i did chemistry in my younger days very little not much of it but you distill thoughts and once you distill the thoughts what comes out is pure so that's where we strive to be i'm not saying we get there often but there are flashes of it that comes and as ken said um meditation for a meditation the ability to stand in that conflict and not judge is not easy you know that that's what really distinguishes a, a master meditator to be able to not judge you may be called to even evaluate but still not judge so these are fine distinctions and um we can i believe with this exercise that you are doing bringing in so much of um you know wonderful thoughts you are paving the way for uh for mediators all over the world to adopt practices that retains humility respect understanding and authenticity thank you very much sam i mean just like i said sometimes when some people say that like are they talking about me kind of thing <laughs> it's like i don't know i because like telling you this is just it started off as conversations it continues as conversations the only thing i think is because these are long conversations and there are lots of them i of course won't get time it's very difficult to get time to edit these but i think these words of wisdom that come out of these those shorter videos i think those might be essential to bring it out i think just the first, maybe just one sentence sometimes is enough i mean look i'm telling you what you have said in this it's not been much for it's been maybe about 40 minutes maybe but those whatever you said in 40 minutes is an essence essence of so many years of your practice and observing people really important i'm telling you i really like i said i don't know whether you realize it or not but this essence is this thing something that like i said the young people i i'm still saying young i'm not saying that they have to be young it could be any age but just the fact that do people get this they don't get this i'm telling you like where, where is the opportunity to get this no uh, uh, from I'm, i'm sure i mean this is what i saw in the masters and this is my constant endeavor i'm not saying that i'm getting anywhere there but it's my endeavor uh to to be able to connect and i'm i'm sure many of the uh, mediators um have experienced that in their mediation what is it that works finally what works are these kind of spiritual concepts because it is this is self determination it is not where a third party judge decides if you want to really take somebody to another space get them to take a decision for themselves it can only come with deeper engagement i think like the spiritual aspect definitely because look there's no gauge to put it out there okay so i you gauge this person on the spiritual level you don't do it it just comes from within the challenge i think basically lies is that because it's happening in a closed room people won't get an opportunity to see that because like you said there is a person outside and the person enters a mediator enters into that room and suddenly transforms so that how many people get to experience that look with litigating lawyers these days things are out on youtube <laughs> 
so <laughs> you uh, the courts these the live proceedings happening so at least in that they are able to see it on a on sitting in their house but where is the opportunity to see mediators at work and that to master mediators at work how do we do that how do we get so that going is, yeah this is something we are trying to create at camp every mediation uh, i am no claim to being a master or, uh, or, or otherwise but uh, um, we have an observer with us because i thought this experience was really good so in our med- in all my mediations at camp uh, i'll have an observer there and if it's a virtual mediation of course we observers we call ourselves fly on the wall that's what i was when i was not and similarly i expect that who's observing fly on the wall but observing mediators different styles was an amazing learning experience for me and i try and give it to others i can But well, I tell you, the only th- little bit of an issue I have with that is because they suddenly might think that we have to become Lela, and the fact is you have to tell them, look, you picked up what is works for you. You're not duplicating her. I mean, it's that part of it. If you start doing that, it's not going to work because finally it comes to yourself. Yeah. So I think that by balancing that out, how do you do that, and how do you explain to them? Vikram, you have this is very insightful of you to have to say that uh, you know. you have to be authentic to yourself and that's what i learned by observing many mediators similarly i tell all the uh, mediators who observe me observe other mediators observe vikram observe whoever you can and pick out the commonality pick out the differences one one came whistling into the room but if uh, guru the mediator did that he would fall or uh, the uh, baby the purest she used all the communication skills but big boss radni khan really didn't use all the uh, communication skills but there were skills of understanding strategy uh, negotiation so each one is different use your strength in mediation we need to understand what is our strength i think the other thing is i think because if there's an observer they can actually put down those things which look asking you is no use because these things just happen these are things that you are and to talk about yourself those things that you will not be able to even talk about that's why a third person when they talk like you talking about these people they would never be able to put those words yeah. that you have put for them so that's why i think that is important but at the same time like of course they have to be careful on this yes. so i think that's why i think we need to find ways to of course you've given us a lot i think it kind of i think i'm not saying they look i'm mean, sure there are people and they bring in a lot more but i think what you really brought out is the things which i have been wanting people to discuss because i think you've put down all those points which i had wanted and we did take up i mean if you have a look at those sessions of that symposium again there about look there about 31 of them so and there about an hour each so i don't know how much time <laughs> can you take out that's the only challenge that i have like i said editing it will work should work but how do i edit now lela how do i edit now what you've said I, i can't edit this i how each of those things that you've said are important but people's time and the essence of what you're saying again matching the two that's again a challenge <laughs> So possibly you should kind of you know it should part of the the mediators um, access to information what you put together so you should, I, i don't know this will be your biggest challenge because you brought this up to such a wonderful space and now i'm sure you you'll be inspired to do it you can understand by i actually i think i've been churning out too much content now i should say okay there's enough let's put out what is whatever is out there on a daily basis let that go out and start working on this aspect but i tell you the thing is in my focus now is i i have two aspects the mediators and the peacemakers so the mediators obviously the people with the my immediate mindset but that by by isolation is not going to work so we need these peacemakers whom i call peacemakers are the people who are going to be going out into the communities and i've identified school teachers i'm looking at school teachers so in the schools and in the communities they'll talk about mediation and it's a simple thing i just put down the definition of the singapore convention that's it i said we'll just talk about this that one paragraph takes care of everything simplifies everything 
and then yes. important thing identify those people with the mediator mindset in those communities and the schools nothing i'm saying that don't you don't have to teach them anything take, take that natural self of theirs because the children will identify them the communities will identify them then put these people who are have disputes first of all getting two disputing parties together is by itself an art everyone can't do it it's an art so that part of it is what these peacemakers will do so identifying them is also be important and then they bring these people to the people they've identified so it's not like i have to do it or i am trying to create some organization for them to do it is them just to explain to them this can be done then let's take these people who are these natural mediators let's take them and then connect them like you like person like you if they observe you what they pick up from you let's them do that so in a way mentoring so all these mediators that i identify on one end are mentoring these people whom we are identifying so then that whole ecosystem that develops i think it will take mediation in the right direction because user experience is the most important and i'm starting with user experience i'm saying tell us about people whom with whom you had a good user experience and you know about that that becomes the starting point because all the all these trainings and everything reach to the point that look finally let's put it down on a log or something what has been the user experience so on basis of that we take you forward in our certification and all i'm saying let's start with the user experience so we don't have to worry about that part now because look these are things to even ask people if the, in terms of that person if you to put down a checklist that checklist is also not good enough good enough like spiritual aspect of it humility aspect of it only a user can tell you that that part of it so they're already i tell you they've already gauged these people look i when i was talking about it right now i'm visualizing a village i'm saying in a village or in a few villages they've identified those people because i've had a have had conversations about this with of course i started with school teachers and they were the ones who told me and i don't know whether i told you about this but i'll repeat that i think i told you in the last when we met we basically started off with someone i had spoken to them about mediation and i think i got it wrong because connecting it to the panchayat and finally with the panchayat the decision making so first had to remove that layer once that layer was in removed and book mediation is something that parties themselves reach that settlement then they understood that then the, the i asked them about the people then names came out so at one end they were just looking at panchayat and that but suddenly they were now thinking of all those people in their village or around and they came out with names and there was these are actual people so it's not okay these people exist those names came out so now to take those names with us but look that part i could not focus up till now because obviously they were doing these things so now the this i i had put out that there's a world peacemakers conference starting on 19th july so i'll bring some people there it's not i mean i look i can't get everyone at the same time maybe next year we'll have more people but bringing these people out so now that focus will be for some time on that so then the i think the ecosystem develops i don't know what your thoughts on that are yes i i do believe you know it has to be an organic growth uh i also need to um to mediation is a very different process it's so counterintuitive adversary is our natural response to conflict it has been our um, you know ingrained into our our minds the adversary so to to bring a process like mediation which is counterintuitive requires a lot of imagination creativity so you you have i mean i i love the way you've done this you are taking those steps now keep going and we are all there to support you thank uh, you but, but uh, i'm sure you 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 will be inspired you know most often in mediation you're sitting there you don't know what your next step is going to be exactly. you don't know what your next word is going to be but there is i believe there is another force that brings you the answers absolutely but i think look the thing is you said that you have with you which means you have to take out time that's the important part so look you have to look this it is a larger good there's a larger good which of course you're doing i'm sure you're doing that but in terms of larger good in relation to activities that i do i need your time for that 
Okay, so that we can then look, it, it is something that whenever people hear that, of course, we're putting it out on YouTube, a lot of people can hear this and we'll circulate these things as we go along. But just the fact that to listen to you, the person that you are, and your experiences, I think is a very important thing. Very, very important. And that's the whole I was the idea. Let's put out people, let them first put a face to mediators. That's, that was the first first challenge that people have first of all, might not have heard of mediation. First, just the fact of talking about mediation, then you have to have a face for mediators. They have no idea. And this That series in conversations with the beautiful mind started like that. That I was talking to someone, says, look, I've heard about mediation. I don't have a face for mediators. Let's put them out. Evolution of mediator, I told you, the series started because I said, look, I, I mean, of course, with you, I will not repeat the words that I say. I won't use those words. But I said, mediators go through a lot they go through a lot when for them i mean just the fact the way they were brought up or i'm saying look to a certain extent is genes an aspect because in one of my sessions i think this was i think i don't know which one of this stefan is in burundi so he was talking about how they looked at spirituality can actually change your genetic structure yeah i, I believe that i believe that concept like forgiveness I'm sure it can impact generations. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So it's so important to talk about those aspects. So going to the to your grandfather, your parents, their thought process and everything. All that is so important. So, as, uh, Vikram, you, you are thinking about it and uh, I, I'm really, I, I think you're doing something wonderful. Um, and I, I just hope and pray that you will be led to achieving what you have set out to achieve. I think I'm, look, I, I mean, I'm saying that the wonderful people that have got connected from all over the world, that's again something that I'm very, very, very particular about, the people that get connected because each of one of them is a face for mediation, be it in their own country or globally. So yeah. that part of it has been something which is very important and that's why it's, look, there are so many people who you can connect in the mediation world, but I, I'm doing it so slowly because it started off with you're attending webinars and you're listening to someone. Just the fact that you listen to someone, you can actually understand the person and a lot of aspects of a person. So take them along. And then as you go along, people connect, you meet them. I, I even look looking at a picture of someone also tells you a lot about the person. And so even, I mean, if there's someone you connect on link before you connect, just have a look at it because we have to be at this stage, be selective only because it is something which is no, they're not enough positive experiences. So one negative is, is, is a lot to go around. And there are people who put that out, those negative experiences. There are, look, there'll be vested interests. There'll be people with self-interest. They'll be there. So we can't, I mean, the idea is not to get into that, any negative aspect of things. So the positive part, let's put out positive and the good people, those beautiful souls, those wonderful people. And that's why I said when I put Ken out there, for me, he represents that. So that's been the face. He's been like the face for yes. mediation and my work. In, in the mediation world, Vikram, I have met amazing people. And, and that's one of the great things I, I feel about being in this space. The, the kind of people that you meet because this practice requires a certain spiritual approach. Otherwise, it's not mediation, it's something else. I'm not saying it's bad or good, but if you really want to be in a space where you are leading people to self-determination, it has to be something different. So that's possibly the reason in the mediation. I've, I've had so many people who have help me in my journey. I mean, I, I don't have the time to go to, uh, to you know, recount each of them, but it has been an amazing group of people who have supported me and helped me walk this journey. It's not an easy journey to be, especially to, you know, from 2007, it was very early on when there was so much of uh, lack of awareness to what this concept is. In fact, some of the mistakes that we are making in our country is because we've not really understood what this concept is. We've not understood the sacredness of this process. And possibly that's a, 
Hi Rosanna. Hi Rosanna. Hi, hi. <laughs> Ros Rosanna Hi. is Rosanna is in Kazakhstan. Lela is a very senior mediator in India, and we had a Oh, very okay. very wonderful conversation on master mediators at work. You must listen to this, Rosanna. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Leila. And that's one of the places I want to visit. Bucket list. <laughs> yes, Rosanna. That's the fun. Yes. Yes. Sorry, uh, I have some problems with the voice. Let me fix it. Rosanna, look, I'm telling you, with Rosanna is that she's really likes to be prepared, and she does a wonderful job of that. We had a discussion on ratification of the Singapore Convention, the Kazakhstan experience. Okay, so have she... you ratified? Yeah, yeah, they ratified. You're one of the countries that have yeah. ratified. So it was a wonderful thing. I mean, just like I said, just the fact that she prepares well and she also works with the their was the parliament as such and works there also. With, so she's got that experience. But at least bringing out that problem with people like her is that because they have to be so prepared, <laughs> they get a little worked up. <laughs> <laughs> because she was really okay how am i going to do this and all that well if you want the best you have to get them to be prepared and help them so rosanna is going to give you the best and the best part is that look it's a combination look of course she's prepared but just the fact that she's such a wonderful person she's been on that show in conversation with the beautiful mind uh, she for this topic I mean, she did not know. I said, look, whatever what topic do you want to talk about? She said, I don't know what topic you tell me. So I was listening to that conversation with her, which would be about two, two and a half hours. I started listening to it. It was so enjoyable that I kept listening to it. And this is something that I've already gone through. Yeah. So that's why I say just go through one, just try it out. You will really, I mean, look at those people, like I'm saying, the wonderful people, just listening to them and the thoughts and everything. It's right. really wonderful. You know, you must be a storehouse of this. <laughs> yes. I told you, I told you, look, three are, I think, three, almost 350 videos already out there. But, and uh, Ken Cloak, Danny Weinstein, you've got so many amazing people that you have interviewed. Baruch, Baruch Bush is coming today. He's also someone who's like for transformative mediation. Yes, he he's done, I've read some of his work. It's like brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Michael Lang, Michael Lang, wonderful person. Michael Lang, yes, wonderful person. Yes. I mean, yeah, each one of them, I mean, this, what they bring as people, I mean, that's the important part. What they bring as Danny Weinstein, when you listen to him and those evolution of a mediator, those thoughts, I mean, I like the way he, his attitude and everything. Uh, he's he's uh, he's come to India. He's been here, and then Danny and I, uh, he gave me the privilege to co-mediate with him a case at camp. Wow! So we both co-mediated. Okay. Ah. So, yeah. Rosanna, can you hear us now? So I will leave you. But before that, before you leave, Lela, Lela was saying that Kazakhstan is on our bucket list. Yes. She wants to visit Kazakhstan, so you must tell her. So you say yes, you must visit Kazakhstan. That's the most important part. <laughs> I, I, I you are so welcome, so welcome. Just let me know uh, if you want to go to Kazakhstan and we'll meet you and yeah. we'll show you uh, what we can show here. <laughs> so. You know, these are some of the things I'd like to do. Yeah. Great. At that stage of my life, I need to do it. <laughs> definitely definitely and there are so many indian people here in in astana especially in astana so okay. yeah. you, you're gonna feel like in india sometimes <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just you, joking <laughs> rosanna's talking about ethnic disputes and mediation mm -hmm. and in her in that conversation in conversation with, with the beautiful mind she was talking about how first First of all, she had come to one of the sessions with Ken Cloak. There's a series of called Talking Books. So he was talking about one of his books and she was wanting to know more about ethnic disputes. So she's interested in that. So she was telling me in that in conversation, the 134 ethnic uh, with people with ethnic, different ethnic backgrounds in Kazakhstan. I was really interested. 134 in Kazakhstan. So we were looking at that whole chart. Yeah. You know, this is the beauty of mediation. If you really understand the principles of mediation, you can apply the process 
to a small money recovery suit, to a matrimonial dispute, to a political dispute, to an ethnic dispute. The process is the same. Yeah. But for that, you have to master the process. Master the process. It's the best tool you can have. So what you do is, Leila, of course, I'm telling you, Rezana, you must listen to this session, okay? This master mediators at work, what she's brought in, because she was a Weinstein Jams fellow, and she observed these master mediators in the US. What she's brought out from there, very important. All those things that the spirituality of it, the humility, the energy, all those things, you must listen to it. I mean, I'm telling you, it's a must listen thing. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to end this session, Leila, and start the next one. You can stay here. There's, I mean, there's I no issue at all. And thank you so much. Thank you, Lela. It was really nice talking to you. And we're going to have more of these conversations. We, we started, Rosanna, with talking to Lela. This new series of mine has started. It's called Master Mediators at Work. So we'll have okay. lots of these conversations. So I, thank I, you. I will, I, I will watch it. And it was nice to meet you. And I hope to see you one, one more time. So. And and yes, you. You, you will see her in okay. Kazakhstan very soon. <laughs> okay. work. I wish you the best. Great. Ethnic. I, you know, there's, it pains us to see what's happening. And we need Vikram. We need more mediators. We need more peacemakers. So really, I, 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 I feel so grateful that we have these opportunities. So thank, thank you. you.